Hello, Miranda. Can you hear me? Hello guys, can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Hello, what happened to you? Hello. Were you informed of what happened or were you just told to wait? Can you hear me, Mariana? Barely. Again, I was asking, what did they tell you? Did they tell you just to wait? Or did they explain what happened? Just only wait. Oh, okay. Then I'll let you know as soon as everyone's here. But this time it wasn't me. Teacher. Hello. What's up? Uh, <laughs> Where are you in school today? Today. <laughs> yes, I went there. Why? Uh, no. Just asking. Okay. No, I'll explain what happened just as soon as everyone's here, so I don't have to repeat it. I also need to wait for everyone to be here to call the roll. Tell you what, I'll start calling the roll, and as the other guys join in, I'll just give them the attendance. You hear that? Yes? Alma Paola? Here. Ana Sofia? Here. Carlos Fernando. Lista. Here. Here. Ilen. Jacqueline Ramos. Here. Jacqueline de la Rocha. Jessica. Here. Here. Joanna.
Kevin. Here. 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 Mariana. Here. Miranda. Here. Osvaldo. Here. Here. Paola. Donet. Stephanie. Well, God will begin. First of all, sorry for being an hour late. Here's what happened. In case you haven't heard, turns out there was a COVID positive case with first semester. That means that uh, following protocol, every student from first semester and every teacher that had contact with first semester since last week is going to be quarantined, well, quarantined for 14 days. So that means I won't be seeing you guys again live until after November 1st. Every other class from today till November 1st is going to be online. Just to let you know. That also means that every other teacher you a lot of, of your other teachers are not going to be attending school as well because they're going to be quarantined. Everyone who had contact with first semester is going to be staying at home for 14 days. I found out today after I was there physically at school, it takes me almost an hour to get from school to my home and then set up the computer and set up the class. That's why I'm only giving you the second half. So that's why I asked if they had told you or if they just told you to wait. Now you know why. Questions, comments? So, who, who got COVID? A girl from first semester, I don't know the name, but it was a girl from first semester. Apparently, she, she wasn't showing any signs last week, but she started doing so during the weekend. And they notified, they tested her, she came positive. That means that everyone that came in contact with her has to be quarantined. That is the whole first semester. And all of us teachers who were in contact with that group, or well, those groups, because it's more than one group. Uh, teacher, so, that, that's why I asked because my friend is in the classroom, and she told oh, me. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was there in the morning, and then they told me, you know what, they're not going to come back in, in 14 days. And I'm like, hey. But yeah, when I was notified when I was about to join in the class, over there online so i had to come back home and i took about an hour to do so and that's the thing that means that a lot of your teachers are not going to be turning up to school as well because a lot of us teach all of the semesters which means that half of your classes that were back at school are going to be online i don't know how you're going to deal with that Did you get that last part? That a lot of your teachers are not going to be there as well? It's not just me. Yes, I sure hope you um, get well soon. Well, that you don't get anything. Yeah, hopefully I won't get I mean, I never take off the mask or the face mask, the plastic one as well. But you never know. Hopefully nothing happens. But they have to take the precaution. Hello, Stephanie. Welcome. Teacher. Yes. Um, I'm Stephanie. I didn't know about the call. Oh, yeah, don't worry. You have your attendance. I, I knew that not all of you knew. Did you hear all what I said about why I wasn't here in the first hour? No. No, you just logged in. Okay. Wait, Joanna's here as well. Hello, Joanna. 
We're all just get logged in. Logged in. Anyone else who just logged in? Okay, Joanna, Stephanie, anyone else? Okay, for you girls who just logged in. Thing is, oh, Renee, wait. I don't want to be repeating much. Hello, Renee. All right, I know you have your attendance as well, don't worry. And I think I can now repeat it. Well, for, for you three girls who just logged in, I wasn't here because I was at school. I was supposed to log in back at school, but it turns out that a girl from first semester is officially with COVID. That means that everyone who came in contact with her, with her that is the entire first semester roster of kids and all of the teachers who came in contact with her, that includes me. We are not going back to school in 14 days. Well, I didn't come in contact with her directly, but with some of her classmates, so they're taking precautions. And I had to come back here home, so that took me about an hour. That's why the class started an hour late. Did you get that? Renee, Stephanie, and Joanna? Yes. Okay, that's the, that's the short explanation. That means I won't be seeing anyone else until after November 1st. If there are no more questions, we'll begin with class. We're going to have it low today because we we'll, we almost lost an hour, more than an hour already. I'm going to share a screenshot with you. We're going to begin with a unit five environment. And we'll begin with a warm up. Let me know if you can see the screenshot. Can you see it? Good. We're going to read them together and then you guys can comment it. Again, this is a warm up to start on the topic, which is the environment. There's a lot to talk about it. So let's begin. I'm going to read the questions and you guys let me know what you think. Is the weather changing in your country? That's number one. Number two, how have humans affected the environment? That's a big question. And number three, why should we care about the environment? Who wants to begin commenting on number one? I want volunteers. Anyone? Me, teacher. Go ahead. I think that, uh, yes, the weather has changed. Um, I remember, like, for example, five years ago, when it was summertime, yeah, it was it was hot and you couldn't resist outside. But uh, especially this year, I have, like, noticed, like, uh, very much hotness. I don't know if you can say it like that. Uh, that you li literally cannot survive out uh, without a uh, like hydrating yourself or or uh, having like a stop to to uh, get some AC uh, or something like that. And also in the winter, uh, also like five years ago, it was like very very cold that you couldn't um, uh, like move from the cold. And uh, like, for example, in 2020, when it was like winter, um, yeah, it was cold, but I don't know for the rest of you, but for me, it was uh, like warmer than it should be. I don't know. Very good. And yes, actually, this year has been reported to be as the hottest year recorded in recent history. 
and it was the, the hardest year in general in the whole world, not just here in, in our country, but around the whole world, this has been the hardest so far. So that tells you a lot. Thanks, Krista. Anyone else who wants to comment on the same one? Do you share Krista's feelings about how we're doing with the weather? Anyone else? I feel weird because we're on October, October <laughs> and even though it's becoming to, it's starting to become like chilly, it's not cold enough. I don't know, it doesn't feel October, October enough. <laughs> yes, I get you. Again, it has to do with the fact that this year has been hotter than any other recorded year. So yeah, we are losing cold. And yeah, usually by this time we're already pulling out the sweaters and the jackets and even the scarves. And this year, maybe a little bit in the morning, but that's about it. Thanks. Anyone else who wants to comment on the microphone? It's okay if you want to comment as well on the on the chat, but if you want to do it on the microphone, it's better. Anyone else? Here, no, do you all agree? Anyone else? No, do I move to the second question? Can you hear me? Oh. Yes. Oh. yes, yes, okay. yes. You can be here. Okay, so do I move to the second question? Yes. Good. Now, how have humans affected the environment? For this one, you can talk a lot. Who wants to participate? Me. Go ahead. Uh, I think that yes, because we don't really care about how much we contaminate every day. Okay, that, that is one way of putting it. Thank you. Anyone else? Different opinion or who wants to add to that opinion? Mariana, how about you? Um, <laughs> I think that Mainly it's the overpopulation, but it's like, um, yes, the problem. And, you know, pollution, burning mm, trash or something, deforestation, all that things that decreases the environment. So it's, it's obvious. We affect the environment and we don't care, like Mr. Benny said. Yes, and you hit the nail, as the go saying goes, you hit the nail. The main problem is overpopulation. Everything else stems from that. But yes, the humans do affect the environment. People who were claiming that there is no climate change have been proven wrong already. Uh, we were saying the year has been the hottest in, in recorded history. Winter is not as cold anymore, so yes. We also have the melting of the polar ice caps, which is also another thing to worry about. Thanks, Mariana. Anyone else who wants to comment? There's still a lot to say about that question. Anyone else? Rebecca, how about you? About the second question? Yes. Um, well, I think that humans uh, are the most responsible ones for affecting the environment because of contamination and causing the global warming because of the, um, the, los gases, please. <laughs> well, the gases, yes. Uh -huh, the gases and in general, that's it. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, very good. Remember guys, you need to participate even if you say something pretty similar, it still counts as participation. Thank you, Rebecca. Someone else? Carlos Cifuentes, how about you? Here. Hi, your opinion on the second question. Uh, teacher, uh, I couldn't hear you. I can repeat. Can you repeat it again? Yes. Could you give us your opinion on the second question? Yeah, about humans affecting the environment. Yes, that one. Okay. Uh, my opinion on this one was uh, that many years ago, I mean, like when when we talk about the the origins of the Homo sapiens, uh, we had like a big variety variety of environment that from from that we evolution to not to make it as um to not use it as good right like mm -hmm. uh not having like the the rights to use environment properties as usual so so by that uh we tend to uh how do you say like abuse yeah i've used the the um how do you say to yeah to abuse i've used the environment at, at the point that most people uh tend to do it like every day and by that i mean it's it's pretty dangerous how in the next years with many with many people almost 8 billion people in the world uh we can share every single environment property before it ends if if we're in danger we should need to use it as a a good property before it reaches the end very good Anyone else who wants to comment before I start commenting on that one? Uh, me, teacher. Go ahead. I think that a lot of people have this mentality that if nobody is doing something, why would I? And it's pretty, it's pretty wrong. And selfish. Uh, yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. Anyone else? No? You want to hear my comments on that? Go ahead. All right. Okay. Well, first of all, I agree with you. We do uh, we do affect the environment a lot, and uh, my comments are going along. Oh wait, Vanet, let me read yours and then I'll comment. Sorry, guys. Yes, you are correct, Rene. Very few of us do anything, if at all. Thank you for that. Again, and yes, talking about well, what, what Rene is saying, very few of us actually take care of things or care. Here's the thing. Uh, some of you who already know me know that I'm not a religious person. I don't believe in God. That's not, not here nor there. Normally, that wouldn't count for anything, but I mean, I respect religion. I respect if you actually believe in God and, and being creative of God, but I don't abide by that. I do abide by evolution and by scientific proof. I have read a lot about it. That's why I don't believe. But the point is, going back to what Carlos said, going back to the beginning of people, there's, there are some theories you can believe in them or not, but there there is some scientific evidence to back them up. There are a lot of facts. That we humans are not from this earth. That's one of the theories. And one of, one of the things that, that backs that up is the fact that we as a species act as a virus. We do not act as mammals. We are classified as mammals, but we don't act like it. 
we are the only species on the entire planet that does not adapt to nature. We try to adapt nature to us. And if it doesn't adapt, we destroy it and we transform it. But we don't adapt to nature. Every other species adapt to their environment by developing sleeping patterns, eating patterns, migration patterns, skin, skin differences, you name it. Every other species has evolved to adapt to their environment. We don't. We try to adapt the environment to our benefit and we populate every possible environment, save for a volcano. And I was going to say the Icelands, but there are people in the Iceland. So we pretty much populate every environment and try to change it. And again, the, th the theory is that we do not come from Earth. We do not conform to any other species on Earth. And that is why we act as a virus. And that is why no matter what our conscious say, our programming, our basic nature is to consume and to just destroy, basically. I'm not saying that everyone does it, but even though we have a great conscience, there is a conflict there with, with our nature and how we view nature, even if it sounds redundant, and how we think. Not many people stop to think and care about the environment. Most people don't, so that's why. Uh, Stephanie, let me read what you're saying. Yeah, they're basically investigating about Mars because they want to go there and, eat and consume its resources as well. Yes, exactly. That's the reason. They're trying to get there before they consume everything here, leave it barren, and just move on, which is exactly what a virus does. It consumes everything from one area and moves to the next to repeat the pattern. It sounds harsh, but that's how we behave as a species. We behave as a virus, not as a mammal. And that's one of the biggest concerns. Now, I, what I was saying about not believing in God has to do with that. I do abide by the theory that we were created by not by a all-seeing, all-powerful God, but maybe there was genetic manipulation. If you go back to Mesopotamia and Sumeria, the oldest civilizations known to man, there is talk about that. Actually, it is pretty interesting, Osvaldo, and it actually answers a lot of the questions people might have as to why we do things the way we do. The other, it's not a fact, but it's an indicator that we do not come from this planet. If you notice the way people walk, the closest to the way people walk are primates. We are also supposed to be part of primates, but we basically defy gravity. But as any doctor, as, an, as any chiropractor will tell you, the way we walk, it actually is counter. Yes, Stephanie, I have the same theory as you do, as, as do a lot of other people. We could talk about it later when we have uh, two hours. But yes, that is probably the reason why it was created. As I was telling you, any doctor, can tell you, especially chiropractors, people who know about bone structure will tell you that the way we walk goes against gravity and against uh, everything else in nature for a reason. Our bones have uh, deteriorated a lot faster, especially our, our, our feet bones and our leg bones on our hips. They deteriorate a lot faster because of the way we walk. We walk against nature. Basically, every other creature can stand up a little bit, but most of the time they won't because it's it's counterintuitive to nature's design. If you notice, how many creatures do you know that are bipedal just like us? Basically us, and that's it. Because even primates, they will go down on, on all fours and, and walk on their, on their knuckles as well for a little bit, and then they can stand up, but they don't do it all the time. Have you noticed that? No? And no one noticed that, but we're the only species that actually does that. No? Well, you can look it up and you'll see that I'm not just making it up. Also, another thing that uh, doesn't help with the environment change, it has to do with that, is the fact that, again, as many of you have been saying, we don't care much about the planet or about you know, the weather or the environment in this case. Because if we go by the theory that we were designed, apparently, have you heard about the, the missing link 
in human evolution? Anyone? The what? The missing link in the Babon Perdido. Have you heard about that in human evolution? No, no one? No? No. Okay, there's a theory in evolution. Well, it's not a theory. It's more like it's an idea. It's, it's not yet a theory. But if you go back to, to the origins, to Cro-Magnon and every other hominid species, there is a point where you have one species and then all of a sudden you have Homo sapiens. But if you follow evolution, there is a gap in there. There's like Homo erectus and then all of a sudden Homo sapiens. There's not an in-between species where you show gradual, gradual growth of the brain or the way that the spinal column aligns to walk and two legs only. That middle point is nowhere to be found. Now, going back to the whole Mesopotamia and Sumeria, it is said that the gods came to Earth and took the creatures that were here and that they took them and mixed with them and they created humans, they created the Adamus. And even if you believe in the Bible, it is said that some of the angels mixed with people on Earth and then they created giants and all that, other sorts of you know, creatures. But if you go by science, it sounds like they took the primitive form of man here on Earth and they genetically manipulated and all of a sudden we have humans who are way smarter than we should be as a species. And here's a problem. Maybe you have heard this, maybe you haven't, but if you haven't, look it up. The biggest problem with, with humans is this. Humans are arguably the most intelligent species on the planet, but despite all of that intelligence, we are still flawed and basically emotional. Our emotions still guide us. You can be the smartest person on the planet, but if you get pissed off enough, you're going to feel the need to punch someone. Or if you get jealous enough, or if you get sad enough, your emotions can dominate you, no matter how smart you are. That doesn't happen with other species. They, they can get depressed as well, but they're not smart enough to create weapons of mass destruction or even atomic bombs that can wipe out the entire planet. They have a limit to their intelligence, and it correlates to their, sorry, to their emotional development. With humans, we have basic emotions. I mean, you're all old enough to know that sex is a big drive on people. The, the urge for sex is huge. That's an emotional need, a physical and emotional need. And it drives a lot of people to do crazy things. Yet we are smart enough to create atomic bombs. So there's no correlation. It's completely counterintuitive to be so smart and so dangerous and yet at the same time be so emotional. It should if you were that if you're that smart, you should not be so emotional because that becomes dangerous. And that's the main problem with humans, and that's why we don't really care about the environment as a species again, or about anything else, because we are way too emotional, we are way too basic in our nature. We still care first and foremost about each of us. We, we care about ourselves and then about everything else. Even if you think about it, if you are a person who's not so emotionally basic, you tend to rationalize things more, you tend to be calmer. If you notice, scientists tend to not be so emotional because they are way more, uh, sorry, intelligence driven. And that's the reason why. Yep. Yes, Mariana. That's exactly what. And that is, and that comes because of that, because humans are way too smart, but way too emo emotional. We didn't, we did not evolve at the same time. So, supposedly, the smarter you get, the less emotional you are, or you should be, as to not be so dangerous. But in our case, all of a sudden, boom! As a species, super intelligent, but at the same time, still emotional, as when we were basic creatures, and that's the main problem. And that correlates to not caring about your environment because you care about ourselves first. We care about ourselves first. That's why. Have you thought about it? Have you heard that before? Anyone? 
Right. I haven't heard about it before, but I think that it does make a lot of sense because, I mean, humans are horrible at some point, so yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you. It's very interesting, and you don't have to believe me. You can look it up. I won't tell you where because then that would be leading you. If you feel that it's interesting enough, you can look all of that online and see what you can find. Yes, yeah, Sophia, we care about money and power because, again, we're being selfish. We care about ourselves first. And there's also, yeah, makes us even more selfish. And there's also a theory as to why we as humans care so much for gold, even though right now it's not so useful. I think I've told you that before. But I will talk about that on another class because this one is over. It's already 1240, and I don't want to take away your, <laughs> sorry, your recess. So for today, that is all. I'll see you, well, digitally on Thursday. Have a great day and take care. It was very interesting. Thank you. Good to know. Take care. And again, if you want to know more, look it up online. Take care, everyone. Thank Bye. you, teacher. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, teacher, I forgot. Um, I never sent the essay because I don't know, like I don't remember, but I had it. So I said it on private chat or? Yes, don't worry. I mean, you okay. have time, no worries. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. You too, bye.